Welcome back. On the explainer tonight, we'll take you through some uh, graphical presentation here, and then we'll speak to my guest, Dr. Abraham Rugo, who's the country manager for International Budget Partnerships Kenya. And what we're seeking to understand with him is that IMF loan that has got Kenyans asking questions. And that loan is worth 2.4 billion US dollars. And that is, of course, something that is worrying to Kenyans considering um, the state of our public debt. And we will get to that in a moment. But this is the figure that we are talking about. 2.4 billion US dollars, roughly 260 billion shillings, or 260.2 billion shillings, in an IMF loan to Kenya that has been agreed uh, at staff level. That is following meetings between the IMF IMF team and the Kenyan authorities at the Treasury Ministry. Now, um, it will get further approval at some point, but that is um, all but decided at this point. But before we get to talk about that loan, let's understand where we are as a country right now. So some statistics to just paint the picture of the state of the country's economy. 3.2 trillion shillings is Kenya's budget for the year 2020-2021, which is the current financial year. And our total expenditure for this year put at 2.9 trillion shillings. But as happens year after year, our budget is funded by loans. We have an 840 billion shillings deficit in our budget. And of course, this is the question we're asking ourselves. 260.2 billion shillings to add on to the growing public debt in the country, which as of December 2020 stands at 7.28 trillion shillings. Now here is where you hear all of the comparisons between this administration and the previous one. This total public debt as at 2020 December is six times that of the public debt during the Kibaki administration, which stood at 1.2 trillion shillings when he left office. Now, of course, one of the things you want to ask yourselves then is why do we need this loan? As we've shown you, this is where we are. But also, things were not good before COVID-19, but the pandemic certainly exacerbated the issue. So where are we? COVID has certainly contracted our revenue collection. We have seen suppressed economic activity. This was due to the restrictions that were put in place to curb the pandemic, the spread. You had the temporary shutdowns of restaurants, bars, schools, churches. And in fact, the revenue for the first six months of this financial year, that's up until December 2020 stood at 907.7 billion shillings. That's what we collected in the first half of this financial year. Seems like quite a bit of money. However, it fell short of the target by 107.6 billion shillings. So as you can see, not doing too well. Another reason that perhaps we would be turning to the IMF, our traditional sources of assistance, perhaps not so much in a position to offer us that assistance. Countries like the United Kingdom and others at the European Union currently fighting and battling a pandemic much worse than we have it here. So when you're taking a look at the contracted revenues, uh, you're taking a look at our traditional lending partners who may not necessarily be in a position to give us as much as they used to. And then you remember there was also the tax relief measures of last year, which were good for the taxpayer, but cost the government some 172 billion shillings. In fact, the IMF itself complained about those tax relief measures, saying it denied the government much needed revenue and of course, um, reduced the country's ability to respond to emergency situations and to continue with development projects. Now, let's go back to this IMF loan of 260 billion shillings. What is it for? Well, it's going into budgetary support. And remember, this is the second loan we're getting from IMF since the COVID-19 pandemic hit our shores. We took about 79 billion shillings in May last year to sort of help us with combating the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, like we said, it goes to budgetary support and it's used at the discretion of the government. This is different from the other loans that you typically see, which um, project fund projects. And so, you know, there would be the money that would be coming in specific to a project. The disbursement of that would take much longer. But once this gets approved by the IMF Executive Board, we understand disbursement would be pretty 
quick with that one. But then it goes into the budget. Now, the big question we're all asking ourselves is, are there any conditions well, we don't have the exact details of this uh, agreement, but there's something in the text uh, from the IMF that says it, this program would advance the structural reform and governance agenda, including addressing weaknesses in some state-owned enterprises. Perhaps speaking to some parasitals that they may be seeking to collapse, it also goes on to talk about this program being part of the ongoing efforts to, quote, strengthen transparency and accountability through the anti corruption framework and finally something else that might tell you where this is headed it says that the program charts a clear path to reduce the vulnerabilities that were crystallized by the COVID-19 shocks has IMF done conditions on Kenya before of course many remember the structural adjustment programs of the late 1980s leading uh, to privatization of many government services also more recently in 2015 you remember VAT was introduced on petroleum products that was a condition by the IMF when they were extending a credit line of about 68 billion shillings to the country it also saw the reintroduction of capital gains tax after a 30-year break and that is what many people are worried about in the country today as we continue to explain what this loan would mean for you and I. Job losses, increased taxes, what would that amount to? And that's why we're talking to Dr. Abraham Arugo from IBP Kenya. Dr. Ari, thank you for speaking with us here tonight. Uh, my first Welcome. question to you is many worried about yet another loan adding to our growing public debt. But did Kenya have any other options available to it other than, you know, going to the IMF? Uh, th thank you so much, uh, Yvonne. Uh, the, the reality is that uh, we are not exploring all the alternatives that we have. Because uh, when you look at the amounts that uh, we are borrowing, uh, our current uh, deficit uh, is about uh, 1 trillion, 1 trillion and, and 48 uh, billion, if you were to argue that. That is almost about... Uh, you know, it's a fair amount. Uh, it's almost 60% uh, uh, of the revenue that we are likely to collect. So once you have a deficit of that size, the deficit for the coming financial year, uh, which this IMF facility is supposed to meet, uh, is about another 937. So that tells you our, buy, our, our deficit is growing year on year. In other words, our revenues, the amount of money we are collecting locally is not able to meet our expenditure. And therefore, one would have expected that one of the uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, first measures is to reduce the amount of deficit, which is factored into the budget and even grows across the year. So that would have been one first alternative. Uh, a second alternative uh, is to say, uh, so the debt that we have is both a debt that is procured for purposes uh, of uh, advancing development, but also debt that is guaranteed to certain state corporations, uh, state-owned uh, enterprises. And there is a need to ask, there are certain corporations that have been bailed out year on year, Kenya Airways, uh, Kenya Pipeline, and the like. Um, and, and there is a need to ask, are there ways in which these either can be privatized or can be uh, made to be more effective uh, so that then the burden uh, on, on the taxpayer uh, reduces. So I okay. think the biggest alternative right now for members of parliament is really how do we cut the deficit? How do we work within the revenues that we are able to collect so that we don't continue in an expansionary process all right, when so all other sectors of the economy are contracting? So basically living within our means. Uh, here's the other thing about loans like these and that is conditions. Uh, so many Kenyans are saying, okay, so this is more money that is being taken in our name. Um, what are we like likely to see as the effect on, on um, persons who are employed, on persons who are running businesses? Will we see job losses, uh, for example, in, in, for those working in government? Um, you know, are we likely to see parastatals being shut down, collapsed, and therefore more job losses? How will this affect uh, the ordinary Kenyan who's watching our bulletin today saying, OK, there's more debt, but what does this mean for them? Um, I think it's important for us to say that debt is future tax. So any debt that we procure today is because we don't have the money right away, and then and therefore we need to get money uh, to be able to facilitate. But there are three questions that are important uh, uh, from an accountability perspective. One, are we investing? Can we actually account for the money for the 7.28 uh, trillion that you have indicated uh, that you have shown? And I think the numbers might be slightly higher. Has that money gone into uh, into investments that are going to assure us some return on investments? 
so that we are able to gain gain back, which then would justify to say that yes, it is a costly affair, but we gain uh, something. Secondly, there is an equity angle. Has it gone to actually advance the development of people across the country uh, 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 that, 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 that should be benefiting from this? And a third one is to ask, uh, okay, fine. So taking for, for, for that there, there, is, there is actually a proper accountability, that there is actually a, a equity, do we have the money to be able to pay back? Because what this means is that when we take another loan, uh, the amount of money we are paying, and this even happens at household level, you take a loan from a bank or from a circle or from a chama, it is the first charge uh, on your on your income uh, when you receive that, uh, that that particular money. So the, how this is, I see this happening is because we are paying more and more to debt. It's likely to crowd out or rather to, to, to leave very few resources available for basic service, service delivery. Secondly, because this money has to be paid back and government has to run, then you likely see a possibility of rising uh, taxes. Now, this is coming at a time time when already companies, we are seeing the numbers with the income tax, which is basically the pay that is paid by employees and the corporate, I mean, and the corporate tax that is paid by, by, by private companies. The numbers are actually showing that that is declining, which tells you that already job losses are happening, yeah. which tells you that already the economy is actually contracting. So, so, so you're likely to see this just aggravating the situation because then the debt repayment amount is going higher and higher by the day. Okay, indeed. Thank you so much uh, for helping us understand this new IMF loan and what it means for us. Uh, Dr. Abraham Rugo, who is the country manager for International Budget Partnerships, Kenya. Asante Sana. One of the biggest outtakes for him, debt today, future tax tomorrow.